First and foremost, I want to thank all of the workers that stand here behind me today, including those that are behind the cameras uh, that are here in support of what I am calling the Oklahoma Values Package. I invited you here today to talk about the Oklahoma Values Package because our state motto is that labor conquers all. And yet, even though we value labor here in the state of Oklahoma, our legislature has failed miserably in actually supporting the workers of this state, and I personally aim to change that. Just like last year, I'm running a paid sick leave bill. We're in the midst of a particularly bad year for the flu. Hourly workers are faced with the ch tough choice of going to work sick or staying home and not getting paid. In Oklahoma, an estimated 44% of private sector workers lack paid sick leave. Emplo employees without paid sick leave are estimated to have one and a half times more likely than people with paid sick leave to go to work with a contagious illness like the flu. Earned sick leave will reduce health care expenditures by ensuring that individuals get preventative care and health care that they need. Additionally, it is estimated that there is over $200 billion per year lost in productivity due to individuals coming to work sick. My bill provides symbiotic benefits to both the employers and the employees. This is because the employees save money through not losing productivity and the employees are able to go ahead and go get the health care that they need to be effective for their employers. This bill seems like common sense to me. Additionally, I am running a pay transparency bill. That bill would ensure equal pay for equal work irrespective of the gender of the employee. In 2017, three bills were ran to raise the minimum wage in the state of Oklahoma and not a single one received a hearing. As a result, this year I'm running my own minimum wage bill that would raise the minimum wage to $11 per hour. That would bring in an estimated $7,800 in additional income for working men and women of this state. And that is important because it would not only allow them to pay more for services and goods in the state of Oklahoma, but it would also allow them to save money for unexpected expenditures like house repairs or car repairs. Additionally, it would mean a larger tax base for the state of Oklahoma. Finally, I am proposing two bills that will increase revenue in the state of Oklahoma that will be beneficial not only for teacher pay raises, but state employee pay raises as well. They have gone about a decade without a state employee pay raise, and I think that it is important that we see to it that, ha that that happens. The two bills that I am running with regard to increasing revenue for the state of Oklahoma are the gross production tax bill, which would raise the gross production tax in the state of Oklahoma to 7%. Additionally, I am requesting that we require corporations to do combined corporate reporting. The GPT at 7% would bring in an estimated $300 million in additional revenue for the state of Oklahoma, which is more than enough for a $5,000 teacher pay raise across the board. Additionally, combined, income, uh, combined corporate income reporting would bring in an estimated $50 to $100 million per year. So at the end of the day, if we truly want to live up to the Oklahoma standard that labor conquers all, it's about time that we actually start supporting the workers of this state. And that's why I'm so appreciative to those workers that showed up here today. And for those of you that are in the back and for those of those, for those that couldn't make it here today, because we're out here fighting for you and we're going to do everything that we can to make Oklahoma a better place for you.